All right, so this will be a short video, um, not exactly a tutorial, just a, a review with commentary to uh, kind of guide uh, people through what I'm doing in the speed run. Uh, it's completely improvised, so my commentary is not going to be the best here. But uh, yeah, just give your file a file name and start the game. Uh, the time starts when you skip that disclaimer text, immediately skip into the main menu. Uh, it's faster to skip because it's immediate, you need to watch the title card anyway, might as well just skip the text. And uh, I'll skip the, the story bits I guess. So for 1-1, one, one, I'll also do some, some pausing. Right away you need to inject about a full s syringe of stabilizer. Uh, you can kind of skimp on it, but it, it's safe to do just a full injection. Don't want to risk losing time. And then, well, it's just well, uh, basic suturing and gel. You shouldn't have trouble with this. And uh, bone reformation. Uh, the order you pick up the bone fragments is the same order they will show up on the left. So make sure you you're consistent. It's a lot a lot like Z1. So uh, if you're used to that uh, operation from second opinion, it's pretty much what you should expect in new blood. But there really isn't any tricks to this. Just reform the bone uh, the best way you can. Um, like what I use works for me, but it's important that you find something that works for you. Uh, one chew is just a few tumors. Again, very basic. Uh, these won't form blood pools, uh, so I guess the only thing you can worry about here is just memorizing where the tumors are. And here you want to like kind of cut it like this. Like you see, I, I struggled a lot there because this angle is kind of weird to memorize. But uh, if you want to. <clears throat> Imagine a line coming from this end of the score to this upper part of the the tool wheel here. Like if you do something like this, it's just not gonna do it. So you should aim a little higher. There's no clear visual cue for this part. So uh, try whatever works for you. But honestly, this is kind of hard to to just get all three in one go. And then uh, you extract all three together because it's faster to do that and then you burn everything very important to burn before you apply the the membrane otherwise the membrane will cover the the little tumors and you won't clearly see where you have to laser it's not exactly a time loss or anything it's just convenient and uh one three the bullet to the heart uh just drain apply the membrane And uh, for the heart here, very important. So I'm actually gonna frame advance here. Uh, a lot of people just drain one of these one by one. Like they go here and then here, 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 here. You can optimize this a lot by just uh, picking spots that overlap. So you see me hitting it here. This will take care of all four blood pools here. Uh, and then I go for these two, which are kind of to the side. This one is the is another one that it's har it's hard to uh, get with the others. You can technically get all three here, so that you can clear this one. Uh, where I am now, it's gonna clear these three. So if you get four, three, three, one, one, it should be optimal. And you can also just do like these three and these bottom two. Honestly, just find whatever works for you. I uh, immediately do uh, this cut. Uh, this is basically two switching, so you, you, you gotta get fast at two switching here. Uh, you just cut, drain, remove. Uh, important, it, you can barely see it. But uh, like when you're extracting, uh, you can actually go straight for for the tray. Like just take it out and do a straight line to the tray. There's no need to worry about angles like you have to with 3D from second opinion, for example. Then just do it again for the second half. And then the defib, notice that it's frame perfect. 
one frame on gray, one on light gray, oh, one on green, one on light gray, and then on the rebound, one, one, one. So it's frame perfect. Uh, otherwise, it's just a simple operation. Uh, one four is pretty straightforward as well. Just gel, gel, laser. These kind of have annoying little hitboxes. Just cut randomly here. Don't try to be too precise, just slash away. Vitals don't really matter too much on normal, so it's kind of whatever. And then just keep draining on the same spot so you can get these three together until the cutscene starts and then just finish it up. No real gimmick. So from this point onwards, you can use Marcus's healing touch. Um, not very worth it for a lot of operations. Uh, on one five, you can use it if you're having trouble keeping the patient alive. But if you're having trouble keeping the patient alive, honestly, I would say you just need more practice on normal, at least on hard. It's normal to take more damage. Um, so yeah, it's just inflammations, and these have a very very tiny hitbox. So. Best of luck hitting them. Again, memorize where the tumors are. Remember, you don't need to click with the ultrasound. You can just hover it in place. And uh, with the inflammations here, you want to make sure you treat these five before panning the camera. And here you need to find, oh yeah, if you have some extra, you can just take care of a small one here or here. And then when you pan the camera, try to get these two pots uh, lined up so that they don't cover any inflammations and you have full view over these inflammations. So positioning them here is ideal because you can treat everything in a single camera pen. Then when you're done with this, pan up, treat the tumor, preferably don't kill the patient, jeez. So yeah, again, just ordinary stuff. 1-6, um, you actually need to worry about your vitals here, uh, it starts pretty simple. And uh, again, you can memorize the location for these, you don't need to ultrasound them like you do with tumors. Um, I just like doing it because uh, vitals are so important in this operation, you can see here I'm boosting to 24. Uh, but vitals are so important here that if you if you spend a long time just with the scalpel out looking for them, you're gonna take more damage, and more damage means more time on the stabilizer. So uh, try to make sure that you know where things are, and if you're not confident, just ultrasound. It's not a big time loss. The ultrasound in this game is pretty good. So the reason we go to 24 here is because you take exactly 22 or 23 damage by popping these four. Uh, if you're not comfortable with leaving the patient at one vitals, because when you're draining and suturing, the patient will still take some damage, and if you let the, the thing bleed again, it's going to deal damage and kill the patient. So maybe overheal to like 30 or 36, if you're not feeling very confident. Uh, the patient can be at zero here, and when the, the cutscene happens, they'll still live. They'll stay at zero. Uh, drain the blood first so that you can actually suture things and cut the four, drain the blood and suture them and oh yeah important uh, you need to drain the blood for these two in order to suture either of them so you, you see I tried to suture this one here but it didn't work because this blood pool is still active so drain these two before you try to suture these uh, you also find that uh, big sutures will try to suture the big lacerations around the small ones. So if you want to make sure that you're suturing the small ones, just do l small sutures around them. Don't go like this, otherwise the game might think you're going for this one. So try to go like this, very close to the, the wound. And then just finish the patient. So yeah, from this point onwards you have Valerie's healing touch as well. And uh, you can see on the bottom here, whenever I have marked that I'll use Marcus's or Valerie's healing touch, there will be a, 
a bracket with the corresponding initial. So for true one, we're going to use Marcus. So you can see here, true one M. Now I highly recommend putting these on your splits in some way so that you know um, which doctor you should be picking and when you're going to use healing touch. So a true one is just more tumors and inflammations, but this time you'll be dealing with pus. The idea here is to use Marcus's healing touch to reduce the time you spend with pus active because pus generates inflammations and those are a pain in the ass to treat. So priority is always drain the pus. So here, drain, 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 and then inflammations. And then after this, uh, you notice that things spawn here. Immediately healing touch so that uh, these pus clouds will not form more inflammations. If you fail to start a few times, there is a chance that these will form inflammations and you have to pause to try to treat them. Uh, the tumor locations are kind of relative to the pus. So uh, this one will be between these two, this one will be directly below this, and the other one will be here down below, uh, uh, below this post cloud. Um, try not to pen the camera down too much so that you can see this top cloud and the bottom tumor in frame. That prevents you from penning the camera uh, unnecessarily to treat this. Yeah, just because Marcus's healing touch is active, you can just deal with all the pus in one go. Then scroll all the way up, treat this guy before any pus spawns. Standard procedure. Then for Choo Choo, the pacemaker. Um, uh, you don't have to use any of the healing touches. Valerie's is kind of useless because cardiac arrest forces the vitals to go down to 10. And Marcus's doesn't actually slow down uh, the fibrillation cycle like it does on second opinion. So uh, you just have to go fast here. So get used to resurrecting the patient. You get two cools and three question mark cools. Okay, is actually no, it's four. So if you get a good, just get another good. That's that's a, a small optimization you can make. You notice here that I got a, a cool and then a good. So if I get another good, the game will clear. So I intentionally uh, hit this a little bit early so that I get a second good. It saves like half a second. I, not even that, actually, just a few frames. Anyway, uh, gel, scalpel, drain, forceps, suture. Uh, that's the sequence you want to do here. Make sure you get it fast because every second counts to skip that. Um, fibrillation cycle. So just get used to these movements. Be careful not to miss because missing here deals a lot of damage, uh, particularly when placing these back. Make sure that you grab them um, in a... like try to grab them close to the part where you connect so that you have a visual cue here. Because if you if you grab it here, right? Let me. I, I guess I can show it here. Um, so you see I grabbed it here. So uh, um, that will be my pivot point. So I don't have a visual cue here for where I need to put the forceps so that this end will connect to this. So try to grab them by the, the connector part so that you have this visual cue here. And don't worry if you start getting fibrillations here. Um, if you get one miss uh, because of the fibrillation, you should still live. But again, just, just practice. And if you're short on time here, uh, you can avoid, uh, you can skip suturing this because the automatic fibrillation happens when you connect uh, the second one. And then you have time to suture both. So after resurrecting the patient, just suture both and you're done. So two three is the first time we use Valerie deliberately. Make sure you pick her if you just mash on this screen. Like if you enter this screen here and you're just mashing A, even if your pointer is here, you will still pick Marcus. You need to wait for a few seconds for the game to pick up Valerie. Notice here that the thing is loaded and I am waiting for Valerie to switch. If you do it on the, f if, if you're just mashing, there is a very good chance that it will not switch to Valerie. 
So it starts off with a defibrillator and then immediately treat this big one. Uh, one thing to note, uh, these small cuts will deal a lot of damage. Uh, so make sure you treat it after you do it and then immediately go for the blood pools and the lacerations. Treat the bone pieces last because these lacerations will deal a lot of damage. Then carefully remove the bone fragments. And again, the order you remove is the order you see here. First in, first out. So extract them in whatever order is comfortable for you. Right after the second healing touch, um, sorry, the second defibrillator, uh, you want to buffer your healing touch here. You can actually use the healing touch while your tools are offline. Uh, you see here that I'm drawing the star. You don't get the visual aid for the star, but if you draw it perfectly, the game will just show you for a frame the star you drew. So my cue for this is when this thing starts bleeding a lot, you draw a star and then kind of buffer it to when the bleeding is about to stop. Then remove all the blood, remove the bone fragment, suture everything, place it. Boom. Easy. And the reason we use Valerie's Healing Touch here is because that last part there deals a lot of damage per time. So we want to avoid using the stabilizer at all costs. Alright, two four is care. It's honestly pretty free. So uh, just suture these and the first one will show up. Uh, you should be tapping the laser here. Do not hold it because as you can see, care gets some iframes shown in yellow here before you can go back to damaging it. So make sure you tap in a rhythm that makes it so you, your laser isn't running out. Uh, you see it go to yellow, you can keep the rhythm but pay attention. If you see it go to red, slow down your, your tapping. Uh, here when there are two, you try to make sure that they stay in the center of the organ. You can do this by kind of like changing where you tap. Like if you tap on the outer edge, you're, you push it towards the, the inner edge, like this here. So I want to move this to the center, right? So instead of tapping on the right side here, I'm going to tap on the left side. You can see me kind of adjusting for this there. It's kind of hard to master at first, but when you get used to it, um, it kind of works out great. The, the reason you want to do that is because if it goes to the edge of the screen here, there's a chance that you're going to miss, miss the iframes and it'll just zoom out uh, off screen. And if it does that, you can't hit it. And that's obviously a time loss. So for the big one, just keep tapping. After dealing a point of damage, you can hold for a bit so that you guarantee that you hit it on the first frame that iframes frames are over, but that's a tiny optimization that no one cares about. So two five is honestly the first major hurdle in the speedrun. Um so you should pick Valerie here. I pick Marcus, but the correct play here is to pick Valerie, and I'll explain why in a bit. But the idea behind burns is there will always be a multiple of three number of burns. So um, if you inject the thing on every thing here, like you get 12 total squares, and that's enough to patch up three uh, burns. So ideally what you want to do is fill everything, cut everything, treat three burns, repeat three times. And you should prioritize the ones that are not blackened um, just because they deal more damage over time. Uh, do not drain the blood just yet. Make sure you cut everything first. And again, uh, vertical cuts work best because you you have to do less cuts. Like if you do horizontal, you need to do one, two, three, four, five, six. With verticals, you have to do one, two, three, four. So if you can actually keep a steady hand, this will will save you some time. And here I like going for these top three first and then the bottom three. But honestly, it's just personal preference. Uh, just make sure that you if you're going for a cluster of burns, make sure you drain the blood together. So if you're going for these two, uh, make sure you drain this blood because it could be like right here and you you can't 
put the thing if there's blood in the way. Which is why I like to treat the, the clusters together. Because there's definitely no blood here to get in the way of those three. So yeah, just place one, two, three, four. If you miss, make another skin graft. I just place it there. So the reasoning here for using Marcus is that you can use the healing touch to kind of slow down the the blood forming cycle. Uh, these extra blood pools show up in a kind of irregular cycle. There's a bit of randomness to it. Uh, you can delay that by using Marcus, but honestly, there is just no scenario where uh, if you're not using the healing touch, these will always show up before you finish treating these three. And if they don't, you can just stall by injecting the blue stuff and cutting it. Not extracting, just injecting the blue stuff and cutting it, cutting around it. So what I recommend doing instead is using Valerie's healing touch um, at this point right over here. So. Right after you finish this, uh, instead of just going straight to cutting, healing touch here, because it'll lock your vitals at 25. You can see that by the time I end up uh, on the second cutting, my vitals are already down at eight. And now I need to waste time injecting two times stabilizer. Oh, I should have done two, but in the, the point is, uh, you lose time by reaching for the stabilizer, so just use Valerie's healing touch. And if you are fast enough, you can actually finish the second cut while the second healing touch is still active. Take some time, uh, take some practice though. So yeah, just drain these. There should be six blood pools, make sure you count. If you don't have six, then that means that something has not spawned yet and you should wait for it to spawn because there's a very high chance that uh, the blood will spawn as you're putting and you're gonna lose a bunch of skin grafts which is the biggest time loss you could ask for in this fight so yeah again just for the last round um, inject more stabilizer and uh, you can see here that I'm just optimizing for cutting everything injecting everything and doing stuff in order to minimize to switching uh, don't extract these uh, before dealing with these three because they spawn these blood pools and as you can see they can get pretty annoying. <laughs> Imagine missing twice dude, what the heck. And yeah, vitals management is very important. Always keep a look on the vitals. It's very easy to lose track here and just randomly kill the patient because you're not paying attention to the vitals. Make sure you, you look at the vitals every now and then. So uh, chapter three, three one is pretty simple. You just pick Marcus. Uh, we do Marcus over Valerie because uh, Valerie prevents the massive vital loss you're about to see, but Marcus prevents more gallstones from showing up. So as soon as you laser that thing, use the healing touch, uh, inject the white thing there, and fully extract it. It takes some getting used to to figure out. Uh, the order of the cuts here, but it's nothing too extreme. I uh, applied the gel and sutured this crappy... <laughs> this is such an awkward suture. But uh, once you get it, uh, always spam the ultrasound here just in case a gallstone showed up, because what will happen is you think, oh, I'm finished, I sutured, and the screen will not back out. And you see, oh, there's still a gallstone, so ultrasound. Just immediately switch to ultrasound here, because if you're done, then nothing happens. But if you're not done, you can immediately see a gallstone and start lasering it. And vitals are not in danger for normal, so no need to choose Valerie. Uh, three choose is very straightforward. It's just a bunch of things. Just drain, suture, glass shards, smart the usual. Um, one thing here is that you get a decision of uh, which direction to go after this midsection, um, up or down. I always like going down first for no particular reason. I just feel like it's it works out the best for me. Maybe it works best for you to go top first, but it's kind of whatever. Uh, you can if you're fast enough. Uh, you don't have to worry about these three blood clouds here. Uh, you can just treat everything else and then as you're treating the glass shards just spam gel in an L formation here. But if you are slow the, these will form into full one blood so uh, if, you're, if you're seeing 
blood pools form here. Just drain them, uh, or well, make gel here your priority. Gel first, and then treat everything else. You're not a danger of vital loss here, so it's kind of whatever. Three three is kind of a gimmick. You need to rotate your wrist to match the rhythm of the the thing. So I'm gonna do this frame by frame, so you can take a look at the twisting and the thing. Just immediately healing touch here, and uh, here's the twisting, right? So you need to be somewhat precise with this. You can see here that I can drop here and it'll work. So for these ones, they will be moving. And some people like to healing touch after this first one, but I like to do it before because it guarantees that this second one will start the cycle um, while healing touch is active. Because if you fail a star here, or if you take too long to draw a star, this cycle will be a little bit off and you will miss the perfectly uh, diamond shape here. You will have a slight angle that is harder to hit. And uh, one thing to point out is that the game expects you to be a little bit late to compensate for input delay. So right here, you can see it's a perfect fit. But if you drop it right now, the game is going to kind of miss. So it kind of expects you to drop about here. So when it's more of a tight fit, so that by the time the thing is released, it'll look like this, a very tight fit. And as you can see, it worked out. So just be a little bit late. Uh, you'll see the guidelines start to match. That's not your cue to, to release. It's when it's like it, when it's like this, you think, oh, it's fine to release. No, wait a little bit more so that it's more of a tight fit and then release. The game does this to compensate for input lag is what I think. Anyway, 3-4 uh, is Soma, very straightforward. Honestly, I'm just gonna skip all of it, just drain. There is a small optimization you can make here which is that if you get a red tumor like that, uh, always laser it when Soma is doing this animation. So even if you get an early spawn, uh, let's see if I get one. Yeah, so it, it spawned there, but if it spawned right at the start, it's worth it to delay treating it when for when Soma is doing this. The exception is when uh, it spawns so early that by the time you finish draining, uh, the thing is already burst and arguably you could say that it's still faster because you can just deal with it but it deals so much damage even on normal that it honestly just doesn't sound worth it it saves like half a second and it's kind of risky it makes like if you're not 100 percent fast dealing with these uh, it can clutter up your screen and it'll make you have to multitask and that's not the most consistent thing so uh, what works for a lot of people is just drain them uh, as soon as they show up. So here I go for a second drain. Uh, instead of going for that, you should have, well, you should go laser these because these are this is going to pop and I'm going to have to deal with it. And there's a second one and you can see that I'm going to treat it after dealing with the core, uh, waiting for it to, to regen. And it doesn't really lose time but as you can see you need to go very fast to make this worth also notice that specifically for the last wave it's not worth going for that because um, if it bursts it takes you longer to treat than just laser that and there's no downtime after dealing with the core so just try to avoid it uh, three five here on the splits I actually uh, say go to hard mode and use Valerie but it's actually faster to do this on normal I think PB does that actually because I forgot to change difficulties yep so the reason it's faster on normal is because uh, aneurysms take less orange juice to um, what's the word to become sedated so make sure you pick Valerie because otherwise you're gonna have to treat all the all the aneurysms. Uh, drain the blood. A lot of people also don't realize that you can kind of double up on some of these, particularly these two and these two, myself included actually. Like you don't have to treat these individually. There's some overlap there, but uh, yeah, aneurysm is pretty straightforward. Just inject, cut, remove, drains. 
forceps for sure. Uh, pan the camera up here so that you can see these two. And here's the big difference, right? On normal, if you preemptively fill your syringe with orange juice, uh, you can take these two on immediately. On hard, you wouldn't be able to do that with a full shot. You needed to go back to the vial. So that alone is what saves normal some time. Even though the aneurysms will take longer to burst. Uh, there's one over here and one down here, so just treat this one first. Don't pen down too much because you're going to have to pen up left here to take care of these. You can just take care of them like this, but honestly this travel distance doesn't make it worth it. Just pen the camera. And uh, here, uh, you don't have to inject stabilizer. I do it because I'm bored, but uh, I also use it as a, a way to count time. So pan the camera up, do a little bit of stabilizer, and then immediately healing touch. Uh, this will make it so that you can treat these aneurysms and one of them will burst and you'll still be fine. On normal, this one takes a little longer to, to burst. So treat it and make it... make Ignore the other one, just go for this one. As soon as you treat the third one, uh, these two will show up. So treat them and you can kind of, <laughs> if you pan the camera just right, you can have all four of these in the screen at once. Here I didn't, so I'm struggling with two selection and suture. Uh, this operation is really good practice, by the way, just for general stuff, because there's a lot of two switching, a lot of suturing, uh, forceps positioning and star practice for healing touch. It's a really, really good practice operation. And it's not too intense like 6-5 or the swords. Uh, 4-1 is just more pus and more inflammations. The only difference here is that you're doing an appendicitis, appendicitis treatment. Anyway, uh, inject the white stuff. Uh, these are kind of annoying to place. Um, you need to click where the arrows point and then either go this way or this way, whichever one works. Uh, you don't have to make them on separate sides like the arrows suggest. Uh, you can just do them on the same side, like down, down. Extract and you're done. If you take longer than 10 seconds, that's not a good pace. Consider resetting Kappa. And uh, the second patient is just the same thing, but with pus and inflammations. Immediately pop Marcus's healing touch so that the pus won't spawn more inflammations. You don't want to deal with more of those. As soon as you extract the appendix, appendix, appendix uh, more pus will show up, immediately drain it, and then just carefully treat the inflammations without killing the patient. Honestly, a lot harder than it should be because these hitboxes are very, very tiny. Otherwise, a very standard operation. 4-2 uh, is kind of like 3-2, but... Uh, There's a few extra steps here because you have some blood clots that you need to cut and drain. And to do that, we actually use Valerie's Healing Touch. Um, the optimal way to do it so that you don't risk killing the patient is right after you finish this suture right here or a glass shard, if you're leaving that for last, use the Healing Touch there, right on the middle. And I, I like going down because there's only one, uh, only one blood clot down here, I think. And uh, I immediately pop in the healing touch. You can kind of wait for doing these. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much in the end. Use it when you're mo most comfortable. And uh, treat the big one, the lacerations, the glass shards, the blood pools. And there will be one blood clot over here. Pen up to the middle. There will be two over here. And uh, a little blood pool. Make sure you treat this. And what I like to do here is immediately go for gel. Uh, it's not optimal because you can actually treat this and the blood clots below before these worsen, but it's kind of hard. Uh, so what I like to do is just gel here to get rid of these two. Kind of failed on that one. But as soon as you do that, there should be two blood clots here for you to treat. Make sure Valerie's Healing Touch is still active. If you're reaching this part and Healing Touch has already run out, consider postponing your healing touch usage or alternatively make sure that you cut the clots before healing touch runs out and then just clean up in a different order 
because these will deal a little bit dam a little bit of damage and the damage over time can become a little bit overwhelming but yeah four three bunch of tumors um, this one can be kind of scary because there's a lot to do and and all but uh, just take these three tumors uh, the small tumors now will have a chance of producing blood which is very annoying but can't be helped so right after here I, I, I inject stabilizer because it's kind of a safety vitals boost. You don't need this, but it makes it so much easier. Like, you don't have to stress about vitals that much. Um, pen up, so you can kind of see the first blood pool mixing in with the, the vital bar. If you go too much, then you're not going to have a good view of these tumors down here. Uh, if you pen too little, you won't have good access to this blood pool. So, uh, there are three tumors here. Memorize their locations, drain the blood that's in the way, treat them. Uh, actually, sorry, don't treat them. Just remove them. This will spawn the next wave of tumors. And you can immediately cut one and try to drain. This will cause the drain to malfunction. If you treat these tumors first, uh, the drain will still only malfunction when you try to drain this new tumor. So what you should be doing uh, if you want to play it riskier. If you're playing it safe, patch these up because they'll deal a lot of damage over time. But if you're playing risky, uh, immediately cut and drain. It won't work because drain will go out. But now you you already started the drain counter. So uh, cut this one. There should be chew down here. Be very careful about slashing down here. If you go too far, it'll cause a laceration to appear. Vitals drop. It's kind of annoying. Uh, there's a last one down here just below the two switching. Don't worry about these being hidden. We'll pan the camera later. Uh, and while the, the drain is offline, all you can really do is vital boost. So just spam stabilizer. When you run out of stabilizer, however, feel free to use the laser to burn some of these. Kind of save some time. And then as soon as you're back, count three or four syringes, I think, yeah, three. So count three syringes from when you run out, and the drain will come back. So when it's back, you should aim to drain all of this blood, these two tumors. Uh, it's, it's okay if you drop something or you, you're not finished in time before defibrillation, that's fine. Uh, one quick thing here, you can actually, if you have the vitals to spare, obviously, let's say that the patient is already going fibrillation here and you want to apply these two membranes. You can actually gel here. Just uh, put push A for one frame on these two here. You will take the damage from operating under fibrillation, but the gel will properly treat these. It's very cool. So like that. And then when the patient's heart stops, revive him, and just clean up the mess. Oh yeah, pop him. Valerie's healing touch. Very important because these will deal a lot of damage, uh, the, the small tumors when you're lasering them. So try to make them your priority. Here I like to uh, treat all these four crevices before panning the camera so that I don't have to pan it back. But if you're worried about healing touch duration, just go straight to these. Because lasering these deal a lot of damage. Deals a lot of damage. Also, don't do what I do here. Make sure that you laser these before you put the membranes. Because if one of these bleeds before this is fully healed, it'll just kill the membrane. Make sure that you laser before you put the membrane. Do what I say, don't do what I do. Okay, 4-4. Four, four. Uh, we do this one on hard. This one is actually faster. It's another aneurysm thing. Uh, the routing here is to treat the small one, then get the syringe ready, treat the big one. You can kind of snipe it as it spawns in if you want to risk it. Worst thing that can happen is getting a miss. And here, this is very annoying. As you can see, the the, the the detection on the rotation is very finicky. You can see that I had it perfectly placed, and yet, oh, never mind. This is the correct one. <laughs> Whoops! 
You can see that I have it perfectly placed and yet the game still thinks, nope, you didn't rotate enough, fuck you. Suture the three ends and do one stabilizer injection, that's about what you have time for. Uh, get the orange juice ready, treat these two at the same time. And as soon as you finish, I think you pop healing touch if memory serves. Yep. So by doing that, this one is about to burst, so you can just wait here with the drain. Uh, if you're being slow enough that this is popping before you have a chance to use the star, just use your star before. Uh, I think there is some leeway with the time usage. Uh, you can alternatively do this on normal, but then this will take longer to burst, so it's probably faster to remove it manually and just let the big one burst. Um, it's kind of hard gauging this because it depends on how fast you are, so try to experiment a bit and see what works for you and what doesn't. And for these, you want to treat one of these small ones, everything else will blow up. So this one blows up now, treat it, and next one should blow up is the other small one, and then the bottom big one, and then this one. Just wait for everything to, to blow up. Injecting things is slow. So yeah, there you go. Very straightforward. Um, 4 or 5 is Ops. Ops is very, very demanding and multitask. And on star uh, accuracy. You need to be able to draw stars accuracy uh, accurately to not have a hard time with Ops. So this thing here is going to take 3, I think, damage to split. Uh, you can let it get some of these blue pellets, doesn't matter too much with the vitals. If you're being safe, obviously treat them, but you can take some damage and be fine. So on the fourth hit here, it's gonna split, and you immediately need to healing touch, because if one of these makes contact with one of the split cores, it's going to cause this to burst, and this is gonna deal a lot of damage. And if this damage showed up before you procced the healing touch, it won't be ignored and vitals will go down with healing touch active because it's damage that happened before you activated it. Like the, the healing touch actually prevents damage from being processed instead of uh, preventing this from going down. If damage has already been processed, processed and it's uh, like tumbling down here, uh, healing touch won't help you. So if you if you're not confident in your stars, make sure that you get it just uh, before the, the fourth damage tick, healing touch safely, and then finish splitting. You will lose a little bit of time, but it's better than having your run die here. Uh, focus fire on one core so that you have an easier time dealing with the remaining one. So it takes three hits on each to kill. That's true, one, this is defeat. Uh, don't worry about the laser running out, it's fine. Uh, do worry, however, when the healing touch runs out, make sure that you're not about to get sniped by a pellet, which could explode star tumors and lead to a massive time loss as the patient dies. Um, for 4, actually 5-1. Very straightforward. Just zippity zap. Um, you don't actually, oh yeah, use Marcus's healing touch. This is important because the patient is going to convulse and convulsions will kind of act like fibrillations, right? So you want to avoid that. And unlike fibrillation, Marcus actually slows down the uh, contractions. Contractions? Seizures? Anyway. Um, just remove this big stick here, it's kind of weird to like go all the way down here to extract it, but it's not a, not as bad as it seems. Uh, suture that and then connect the 12 dots here. With healing touch you have plenty of time, so don't really worry too much about accidentally having to go through the, the seizure. Very straightforward. 5-2 uh, is also very straightforward. Although there is a catch that a lot of people don't realize, myself included. Start with cardiac arrest. Um, okay, so you notice that I started draining all of these right after drawing a star. Reason is, the blood that shows up here is random, randomly generated. 
So as soon as you finish uh, drawing blood, uh, draining the blood, uh, the game is kind of like, okay, how much time needs to pass before I spawn another blood pool? If you healing touch with Marcus, that time gets delayed. So you drain everything. I forgot to drain that one, and it's going to bite me in the ass here because I'm not going to be able to put this here. Yeah, so if that if this blood pool is active, you can't place here. If these are active, you can't place here. So make sure that you drain everything. Then immediately place all membranes to prevent further hemorrhaging. Gel and suture everything. If you're not confident that you can suture all of these fast, uh, don't worry. You, you, you will take some vital damage, but you need to drain again. It's not a big time loss. And with Marcus, I think you have extra time too, so don't don't stress over it. 5-3 is kind of the same thing, except now there's blood clots hidden here. There should be three here and four here. One, two, three, four. You want to make sure that you cut all f seven of them, and then you treat them in groups. You treat these four and then these three, because unlike the past operation, you're not going to be in healing touch here. You can use healing touch already, but it's going to create a bunch of lag because there is a lot of blood on screen and blood has a lot of particles that need to be processed. So I uh, don't exactly recommend it. So drain four, suture four, drain three, suture three, and then you proc the healing touch. The reasoning for this is that these uh, th this blood is going to regen much, much faster than 5 chew. So healing touch here makes things a lot more consistent, although the game can still mess with you if you get bad RNG on the blood spawns. Uh, five four is Onyx. Uh, the first find here is is kind of the the highlight of this. Uh, there are a few specific hiding spots. It would do you good to memorize them. There should be one over here, one over here, one over here, one all the way over there, like on the edge of the organ, and one right down there on the other edge of the organ. So try to memorize these. Um, and look for them specifically. I found one there. So from from that on, the the fight is pretty simple. You can see it dives in a, an angle here, so you kind of know which direction to look uh, for it. There are many places where it can end up. So if you somehow have every single position memorized, you can just determine it from the angle alone, but it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, just repeat this process a few times and it dies. It's very anticlimactic. Not much to it. 5-5 five, five is kind of annoying because of the small hitboxes. Uh, this guy got shot by a shotgun, so... Uh, drain these two on the top. Uh, these regen... These... If you drain this blood and don't treat the wound, the blood will respawn very, very fast, even on normal. So make sure you treat them in pairs. You can kind of deal the deal with these four at the same time, but it's very very tight, and I wouldn't recommend it. You're just gonna lose time to blood pools. So I treat these two and then these two. You actually need to extract the pellet here, which can kind of waste your time. But again, do what works for you. And here it's actually better to extract all four together because it doesn't take that. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to regen the blood. These two require you to cut, so what I like to do is drain, 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 scalpel, scalpel, forceps, 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 drain, 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 uh, forceps, 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 and then a circle of gel. and struggling with the hitboxes, obviously. And there you go. Very straightforward. 5-6 uh, is exactly like 5-4, uh, except there's a little bit of a catch on Onyx. Uh, again, there's the first hiding spot. There's one all the way up there, and there's one all the way down here, which is the one I got. So after that, the fight is kind of a breeze. Uh, it's going to trigger this after a few hits. Uh, the ultrasound is kind of useless here, just use it to pen around. Uh, make sure you can count to four, that's very important. And uh, you also notice that the, a lot of the clones are already showed up. So if you notice someone spawning in, like right here, you can safely assume that it 
is the, the thing you're looking for. But again, this could be deceiving. On later waves, more three dots uh, spawn. So make sure that you can count to four. It sounds silly, but really that's the only thing that's hard about this operation. Counting to four. Five seven is the puzzle. Uh, we have a solution for this pinned in the New Blood channel on the Discord server. Highly recommend checking that out. Uh, you can kind of see the solution here. Uh, what I personally like to do is blue, then green, then yellow, then red, but you can do it in any order you want. Just make sure that you follow the movements for that color. It's honestly very straightforward. Oh, and the reason we do this on hard is because the hard solution has less moves than the normal solution. Reason for this being that hard actually rotates two pieces at once uh, with one movement for some specific columns. So, much, much better. Then 6 1, we have Brachion. Uh, make sure you switch back to normal. Brachion on hard deals a lot of damage. And with Brachion, it's all about pacing yourself. There, there's really no advice that I can give you except, oh, do this, this, that. Because the strat depends on how fast you are. So you can see here that I can actually go for uh, inject all three, extract all three without having to pinch anything. But if you slow down, you actually need to pinch these. Always make sure that you pinch the very last one. And if possible, pinch it when it's blinking so that you kind of stun it. Don't worry about it if it's a, a long segment like this, but for the smaller ones, make sure that you do that. So the optimal here is to extract everything before it becomes an issue, but as you can see, that's very that's cutting it very close. So if you don't want to do that, pinch the, the thing that's further away from the core. For the second pattern here, oh, notice that you can actually inject things as soon as the thing spawns in. You don't have to wait for the graphic here, let me show you. So on this frame right here, you can actually already start your syringe, if you already know the position, which is what I do here. I start syringing before the graphic shows up there, which is fine because as far as the game is concerned, it already spawned in, the animation is just playing. So make sure you memorize where things are. It's always in this general area here. Uh, so just just get a few for that, I guess. And again, you can actually go YOLO here and extract all three before it's an issue. Uh, what I like to do in, as a backup is to pinch this one here. It gives you enough time to do the crazy strat without actually being crazy. Fourth pattern is uh, sorry. Third pattern is gonna have four arms. They're all equal length, kind of. Uh, these two are shorter, actually. But anyway, just remove two, pinch two, remove two. It's about as simple as that. Oh, another thing that you can, another technique is that if the light is going to reach an arm that is not extracted yet, you can actually let the light go through. So here I inject, but purposefully stop so that when this thing goes in, I finish injecting. If I finish injecting now, when this thing goes here, it's going to revive this and I'm going to have to inject again. So you purposefully stop, wait for it to charge in, and then you finish injecting like that. It saves a considerable amount of time to do that you save waiting for but it also saves a lot of vitals so again wave four extract these two pinch these two and just extract things and pinch them as needed here i do another wait thing this this one i don't really have to wait because it's already so close but if you want to optimize it you can uh cut your injection short here and apply some here and then just boop boop and pinch that for optimal but honestly you just have to build this yourself sadly there's there's no way to know what's optimal for your current speed uh, level you just have to keep trying until you figure out what works all I can do is show you the techniques that 
speed it up but you need to chain those techniques yourself and when you do get better you need to relearn it because you're doing things fast enough which means that your cycles aren't adding up which means that you need to reevaluate your strategy breaking is all about uh, how fast you move so make sure that you always revisit it so that you get a a new feel for the pattern as you get faster so five chew so, sorry six chew is the flashing tumors uh, what I like to do here is extract the top left one and then healing touch but the safe strat is to just healing touch immediately after opening the patient doing it like I do saves two seconds because you spend less time waiting for these to turn blue but honestly it's just not worth it because if you miss the cycle on this one you're gonna wait a long time so extract one two Three. The order here matters, by the way, because the order things turn red is one, two, three, four, and the, these this these two will become blue. This one will become blue first. If you do my strat, make sure that you kind of stall a little bit before going for the last one, because there is a chance that it still hasn't turned blue. And if you touch it while it's red, bad things happen. So stall by kind of placing the membranes ahead of time. 6-3 is kind of a guilt rush, uh, sorry not guilt rush, stigma rush, there's Soma, which is exactly the same as before, there's Brachion, which has a few different patterns, you notice that the arms are a little bit shorter, which can kind of trip you up, but again, just get a few for it, and Ops has the exact same pattern, so you can take a little bit of damage, it's fine. But what really, really matters is how well you can draw a star. As soon as it splits. Uh, Ops is all about multitasking, so just make sure that um, you're not taking too much damage beforehand if you're not very good at drawing stars which is, you know, understandable, but uh, to prevent a fatality here, because a death in 6-3 means restarting from patient 1 that had Soma, and you probably don't me need me to tell you that that's a big time loss. So again, focus fire on one core so that it'll explode first and you have to multitask less. It takes three hits on each core. And depending on how many star tumors are left, you can safely let a pellet tickle the, the main core. It's just going to deal a little bit of damage. Um, if you're having trouble with ops, all I can recommend is to just do it over and over and over so that you can build your own intuition behind uh, when you should be draining, when it's fine to take damage, uh, when it's fine to draw a star. Um, yeah, these are all things that sadly you have to figure out for yourself. I can't really offer much help because every player plays at a different speed. And the subtleties of how fast you go matter a lot. So 6-4 is the dog, the RNG dog. So it's RNG because her fibrillations are kind of random. Kind of like Choo Choo, but unlike Choo Choo, you can't go fast enough to ignore it. So mind the defibrillator being on the left part here of the, of the gauge. So it's a little bit less strict with timing. You have one, two frames for light gray, one, two frames for green. So it's slightly easier to um, hit the green part. Anyway, uh, what I like to do is treat these three all at once. You can drain here in the same spot and then extract these three pellets. Uh, this is the bare minimum that you have to do before your first fibrillation. Treat these three here. Um, from here, you, you have a few avenues. So it, if you feel like it took too long here, treat only these top two and go as, f as far as you can. The fibrillation will, will probably interrupt you. If you're feeling ballsy, however, you can go for three here. 
and just drain, 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 cut, 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 drain, 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 forceps, forceps, forceps. It's, it's all about familiarity with the two switching and the the positions here. Uh, mind the fact that the fibrillation on PB was cancelled, I think. So you can see it fibrillating and I kind of stop here with the gel to wait for it. Uh, or, or, uh, I don't have audio so maybe it stopped by itself. But anyway, it's fine to take a miss there if you're spamming the gel and the, the heart starts fibrillating. Uh, it's fine to just take some damage. It doesn't matter too much. But if the fibrillation doesn't kick in like it did here, immediately healing touch with Valerie and um, treat this last one. And then there will be three blood clots that you need to treat. Uh, four actually, there's two down here. Make sure you suture these correctly. Another fibrillation should be about to kick in if you're being slower than optimal. So yeah, exactly. So I, I had perfect RNG, but I blew it because I fucked up with the sutures. And there you go. One final defibrillator on the dog, and that's that's a wrap. Very straightforward, but there's a lot of RNG and a lot of adapting on the fly here. Very important to practice this. All right, six five. <clears throat> uh, pick Valerie. We are gonna use her for the last patient that has like three billion blood clots in the heart. So you can't use the healing touch for the first few operations. This guy starts dead. Make sure you bring him back to life. And then again with the burns, there is there are nine burns total. And you want to make sure that you treat this one immediately. Like you can treat these chopped too, like I do, but make sure that the third one you treat is this one, because this one is the only burn that I know of that can worsen. So it'll, it'll become black. So it's going to be harder to treat, etc. It's just not a pleasant time. And uh, make sure that you manage the vitals here. You take much more damage compared to two five. So make sure that you pay attention to the vitals. Uh, what I like to do is cut all, cut everything, treat these three burns, make sure you drain all this blood too, just to make sure that you don't miss when placing here. So I treat top two, drain all the blood, treat the bottom one, and then inject the yellow stuff. If you're low on vitals, just stabilize her immediately. And then put your vitals back up to like I put 15, but honestly I should have gone to like 30 because I'm gonna have to heal later anyway. Might as well just do it now with the stabilizer. Uh, make sure that you wait for these two blood pools to spawn before placing your membranes, just in case. Because, just in case you're sanic fast. Or you get very unlucky with how quickly the blood spawns. Because uh, there's no worse feeling than placing the fourth membrane and then the blood pool shows up and you just lost four skin grafts. So yeah, just place everything and then what I like to do is pan the camera down because this is the only burn down here and then finish it and then go back up so that I can see all three burns and the, the whole playing view here. Boost vitals one more time before the patient dies. Uh, yeah, need more. Around to like 20 to 30 should be fine. Cut everything and then just place everything. Should be pretty good. A really good time here to, uh, to use as a benchmark is your IGT will be close to 8.30. 8.40 if you're going really really fast and 8.47 if you're really 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 fast. And that was still kind of kind of finicky. You can probably reach 850 here. Uh, second patient has a bunch of bullet holes. Uh, again, you should treat these in pairs, but you can treat these six all together if you're fast enough. Uh, it takes some experimentation to figure out what works for your uh, speed level. But you can do all six and then these two.
These two bleed faster because they still have bullets. So make sure you treat these two separately. Uh, here I like to start by draining the blood and then removing the, the rifle round because these the, this blood actually deals damage. So drain everything. Oh wait, I, I go for the pellets first. Interesting. Well, it, it doesn't matter in the end because the damage you take on normal isn't that high. But again, whatever works for you. There's no set order you need to do this and just figure out whatever works. And again, here you need, you want to pan down the camera by a lot because if you if you skip uh, if you stay just a little bit up, Marcus's head will be in in front of this. So it's, you're going to have a hard time picking it up when you can barely see it with Marcus covering the thing. So make sure Marcus is not in the way of the blood pool. Alright, patient three. It's just glass shards. Uh, this one is the one you need to worry about with vitals. Uh, this guy is going to take a lot of damage because there's like a billion blood clots. Make sure you boost those vitals. And I, I personally like doing boost, doing the vital boost right after here. Uh, make sure that you pan up and take care of these blood pools before bothering with the stabilizer. There's four total, one here, one here, one here, one here. And uh, I went straight for the cutting, but you can boost vitals. Just know that there are five blood clots dealing damage per second. If you treat one of them, you're going to cut your damage per second by one-fifth which is considerable. If you treat two, you take two fifths off, which helps with your healing and you're gonna have to heal less. Just make sure you heal, don't immediately cut because that's the number one way to get your patient killed. Uh, four is pretty much two, three all over again. Spam gel, uh, sutures. Things will show up as you extract bone fragments this time. It won't just all show up at once. Just be careful. It's really not... There There really isn't much to talk about here. And again, the order you pick them up is the same order you place them back, so... Plan ahead. The last patient is just a bunch of blood clots. Immediately pop in Valerie's healing touch. Five of these will show up. Uh, there will be more lacerations. I don't know where they come from. And then just the th remaining three and GG. This operation is by far the most demanding in the game. 6-5 is just absolutely crushing on your hands because there is a lot of A button mashing for the the skin grafts. There is a lot of action going on on both sides of the screen. You need to constantly move your hands. There's just so much going on and it takes some getting used to to not have your hands physically dead by the time you get to 6-6, six, six, which is a very difficult operation. So, uh, liver transplant, you should kind of know about it from second opinions, kidney transplant, just the, the order is blue, yellow, red, green and immediately treat the stigma when it, when it shows up. Um, I like to do the yellow one when the big care shows up, but it's wholly unnecessary. Save Marcus's healing touch for the second operation because it has onyx plus care and it's uh, a little bit more annoying to deal with. So as the, the big care is doing its thing and not merging, I uh, do the yellow thing. You don't have to do this, it just saves a little bit of time because it properly utilizes your downtime. And again, try to keep it away from the the organ, the big one. Uh, sometimes it'll go off screen, sometimes it'll go behind the Lena and just <laughs> adapt, improvise, overcome. Then do the red and then do the green. So for the second patient, same deal, but this time it'll be one care and one onyx. Immediately pop open onyx after dealing one point of damage. And your main priority here is to make sure that care doesn't do much damage. 
So focus it down. When the second one, when the second wave shows up, uh, deal damage to Onyx and immediately healing touch. This will make it so that you can focus your fire on care as you're finding Onyx. As soon as you see Onyx dive in, stop lasering and focus on the ultrasound. If you're feeling ballsy, you can finish your current damage cycle on care. But yeah, focus fire here. Uh, you can kind of do this technique where, uh, where you split the laser, like you use the iframes. Like this guy is in iframes, so I switch my targeting to this guy and then back and forth as the iframes go. Uh, if, you, if you do it correctly, it saves a little bit of time because it better uses your downtime and you're dealing damage uh, to both of them, but honestly, it's a very small uh, difference. And I keep going, keep treating Onyx. Um, you can kind of use the care cutscene downtime to find it. Uh, and as Onyx does its own cutscene, you can deal one point of damage to care. And as Care is doing its thing, you can do the last point of damage to Onyx. Always make sure that you're doing something here. If Onyx is doing a cutscene, damage Care. If Care is doing a cutscene, damage Onyx. It's very, very easy to get overwhelmed in this operation because your healing touch will actually not last for as long as you probably want. So take some experimenting to know when to, to use it. Uh, ideally, you want to use it after the second point of damage you deal to Onyx. That way you can last until you, you kill Onyx entirely. Uh, if you focus it on, on PB, I focused on Care as well as Onyx. But if you're starting out, I highly recommend just focusing on, on Onyx. Like as soon as Onyx dives in, just immediately search for it and find it. Don't go around looking for care. But if you do want to multitask, then there is a potential for massive time save because it properly utilizes your downtime. Finally, chapter seven. Uh, seven one is kind of it's very similar to Zichu in second opinion. You drain the tumor, cut the veins, remove it, and deal with the small stuff. Sometimes blood pools will show up, it's kind of random. When there are two of them, you need to make sure you extract them at the same time. It's honestly just exactly the same. On this one, I like to treat this one first, because it'll, it'll drain this guy. And then the lights will go out, pick up the, the lighter. Immediately... Oh well, I guess you healing touch before picking up the lighter. So use Valerie's healing touch to make sure that the vitals don't plummet and you don't have to worry about them. Pick up the lighter, cut this thing. Don't extract it just yet, otherwise it'll regen. Uh, fully extract these two and then go back to extract the first one you treated. And then it becomes a game of hide and seek with these small tumors. You can kind of memorize where the main tumors were. Uh, they the small ones spawn around them, but it's very easy to just miss one sometime, like this. <laughs> so make sure you look around. 7-2, more Stigma Rush. Uh, Brachion is the same as before, again, just get a few for your, your Brachion algorithm, so to speak. Like, there will be a few short arms. Again, uh, you can let this thing deal damage if there is still an arm attached. You just have to figure something out for your own skill level. Uh, I sadly don't have much advice to bring to the table here. Uh, with Care plus Soma, uh, you should activate your healing touch here and focus only on Care. Because if you don't healing touch, your laser is going to probably run out from having to deal with the both cares and so much tumors. So focus on care here. Use the, the multi-tap technique where you alternate. It's not the most optimal strat, but it works. Make sure that you treat so much tumors before they become problematic. On your downtime you can kind of begin draining Soma. 
Don't, however, expose the core just yet, because it'll make Soma split for the second point of damage, and you don't want to deal with mature care and split Soma at the same time, because one of those two is going to deal a lot of damage. You don't want to clean up after that. So focus on care, because it attacks more frequently, and then just kill Soma. It's pretty standard. And here there's Onyx plus Soma. Onyx always starts on the same spot. Uh, you don't even need to ultrasound. Just cut on this general area and we'll find him instantly. And then obviously prioritize Onyx at all costs. Uh, make sure you're listening for the sound that Soma makes when it makes a tumor. And then immediately treat it. You don't want to deal with the vital loss. And with Onyx out of the way, just finish dealing with Soma. Pretty standard. Uh, 7 3. The brain. It's complicated. So we pick Marcus' healing touch here, but. Honestly, it's not that much necessary, and it might just... Well, it's hard to do it without it, but it's not... I don't know. It depends on how fast you draw a star. Uh, pulling these perfectly vertical is way diff way more difficult than it seems. If you deviate just slightly from the angle, you drop it. Uh, don't touch the red panel. It kills the patient. And then here, you cannot touch these these little stars. They instantly kill the patient. Even if you have Valerie's Healing Touch active. So just pop in Marcus's Healing Touch and make sure that it doesn't touch anything. Uh, one of these stars will also home in on your current position, so be careful with that. With he Marcus's Healing Touch you probably don't have to worry about it. 7-4. Uh, the burns. Or well, the, the chemical burns. So this one is all about syringe management. Uh, don't boost vitals. Do not use the stabilizer. It'll be tempting to because you're taking a lot of damage, but don't do it. And you need to get a, a little bit of sense here for how much of each liquid you need. Otherwise, you're going to pull too much from the syringe. You're going to lose time. You're going to waste time, and uh, you probably waste your syringe use. So. Always preemptively take the white stuff. Uh, you need about a third to half of the syringe. The yellow thing, if you draw fully, uh, it's not enough to take two of these. So I usually draw about two thirds, deal with one, and then just lightly tap the yellow again to, to deal with the, the other one. So here I go to like two thirds, treat it, and then tap just a little bit to get enough to deal with it. For the blue ones, it takes a uh, full syringe for each blue. For the red, it takes half a syringe for each. So you can actually deal with two of them with one syringe. Also, you should treat them in order red, yellow, blue, just because of how long it takes for each to burst. But yeah, that's just a small optimization. Uh, you should healing touch right after this wave. You you're gonna hit red vitals, and that's your cue for healing touch. Also, make sure you memorize where the colors are. Like the it, it'll be shuffled, but there will always be the same amount. So for this one here, there's five five of them: three reds, one blue, one yellow. The position of the colors will be shuffled, but the amount of colors won't. So it'll always be three red, one blue, one yellow. The position will be random, but the number of colors will be the same. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> and now because I, I, I wasted all that syringe with that, I am probably going to run out here. Make sure that you pay attention to when your syringe is low. If your syringe reads, hits critical red, uh, wait before injecting in blue. Just try to get a, an intuition for how long you need to wait for the syringe to not run out when you're dealing with these. Okay. 
really there isn't much to it other than that. Just manage your syringe, TM. Uh, 7 5 is RNG. Way to go, Trauma Center and RNG on the second to last operation for two consecutive games. But uh, we picked Marcus here because it allows us to extract the tracking device in one fell swoop. So there are two approaches to this operation. You can healing touch immediately or you can healing touch after the first fibrillation. The second option is uh, more consistent but the first one is much much faster because if you get lucky and skip the fibrillation or if you're super fast in extracting the, the pump you can actually get to the, the core. You see what I mean here. So I immediately healing touch and laser the, the things. Laser 1, 2, 3, 4, extract them, and then you need to cut this shape, which is kind of weird to cut. If you do this fast enough, you will have enough time to fully extract the tracking device before the first fibrillation begins. It takes, I think, four or five hits each Oh, no, no, sorry. It's one hit and then a bunch of scalpels. So if, if the thing begins fibrillating when you're in this kind of situation, like let's say it started fibrillating here, you have 78 vitals and it will drop to 10. So it's pretty safe to get misses while the heart is fibrillating. And the thing is, you can push the scalpel for one frame and get a miss, but on that one frame that it's active, it can actually take care of these dots. So let's see that it's fibrillating right now. Just select your scalpel, put it right over here, and hit A. It'll take care of these two dots, it'll give you some damage, but you will take care of these. If you repeat this for everything, you can kind of finish the cycle you're currently in uh, before the, the fibrillation fully kicks in. And that saves you a little bit of time. If you're lucky like me though, no need to worry about it. You just fully extract everything before the fibrillation is a thing. Uh, the fibrillation timer is random, so it's really all about luck here. Like if you if you do this operation a few times, you can kind of get an, an understanding of what will work for you, like when to use healing touch and how fast you can cut the, the pump out and how fast you can circle the scalpel around the, the laser. Uh, this is kind of a weird angle. Make sure that it's properly horizontal when you're placing it back. Like this. Make sure it's in this angle around here because it's very finicky about the angle for some reason. Not the position, just the angle. Put the chips back and get ready for the final boss. So Cardia is very difficult in the sense that there is a lot to optimize and not a, lo not a lot of time to pull it off. So pick Marcus and the first thing you see is this. Immediately extract the red one. That's all you have to do. However, if you want to be optimal about it, you will gel this entire area cut it all out. This obviously depends on how fast you can scalpel. But you can see here that I'm gonna uh, scalpel this area here first. Uh, you can go for all of it if you're feeling ballsy, but um, it's recommended to just extract the bottom half and then the top half. Because if Cardia moves down, also Cardia moved to the left here, but if it moved down, uh, only extract the southeast part and then extract everything else. Because if you try to extract while Cardia is on top of something, it'll fail. So make sure Cardia is not moving down. Um, hang on. So gel the bottom area. If Cardia moved down here, uh, only extract this portion here. And then as quick as you can extract this, gel everything else, cut everything else. And then here's the catch. If you tap with the forceps, exactly on top of cardio when it's exactly aligned with the square it'll cause a miss but only the that square will go back to being um, white so you can just gel extract it again and extract everything together if you try to do this 
if you're trying to pinch Cardia on any other tile, like if, if it's between tiles, um, or if you're trying to extract it from any other square, it'll cause everything to go back to white, and then you have to Joe it again. For the second one, um, this is where things can get a little bit hard for a lot of people. Uh, you can get a pretty cool skip here. You can actually skip Cardia's entire walking animation. So what you want to do is spam gel in this vertical line. Make sure that you haven't moved the camera so that it's perfectly centered on your screen. And you really need all of it. So you want to cut all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. So that you extract this entire central column. Uh, if you fail to do that, at least make sure that these, this one is extracted. So if you do that fast enough, Cardia will spawn, I think, here. There will be no ground below him, so it'll teleport. And then just extract the left part and right parts before Cardia spawns for a second time. If you do it correctly, you will have enough time to use a syringe before it spawns again. Uh, if you want a different approach, you can try extracting this most of the central part and then this and then this and then Cardia should spawn at whatever was left down here or if you're um, not fast enough you, you should, st should still have two areas just extract the one that Cardia is not in and use the pinching trick again to extract what's left make sure you boost your vitals when you can like when it, when you have downtime here doesn't matter too much but always nice to have a safety net. Uh, here it's important to extract these two and this bottom one. So ideally you want to make sure that you hit all four of these lines and cut, 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 cut. This will make Cardia spawn here and just instantly teleport like it did on phase two. This one is a little bit trickier to do though, so don't worry about it if you fail too much. Um, just make sure that you extract these two and these two. Like if you want to, you can just extract these two and then these two and it'll work just as fine. So after doing this, your priority will be to extract these two tiles because if Cardia spawns next to them, it can lead to some damage and time loss. However, if you're feeling adventurous, you can go for the all cut, all extract like I go here. You just barely have enough time to wiggle your scalpel around to cut everything and extract it all. But uh, most likely what's going to happen, uh, if you're playing it safe, uh, extract this little S shape here, Z shape, whatever, and this S shape. Uh, this will leave you with eight squares, so you, you just do this cut and you extract the red panels. And Cardio will spawn in one of these eight, just use the pinching trick again to remove it from play. Also make sure you're not cutting it too wildly as it will consume your scalpel and it will make you run out of it, which is very annoying. So for the second phase, um, it takes some getting used to, but make sure you're constantly lasering its head. It moves erratically so it can be kind of hard to aim, but make sure that you're constantly, las constantly lasering him. Do not let your laser run out on the first phase here. If it takes a little while to do the tumors and you feel like your laser is about to run out, do not let it run out. This is paramount to the quick kill. So yeah, as soon as it does, extract the three tumors that it's going to place, uh, treat this laceration, and then laser uh, until you deal damage. Wait for a bit and then go back to lasering. You, the reason you don't keep spamming the laser is because Cardia gets a few iframes as it teleports away and then start damaging it again. Buffer a star, do not worry about speed. I draw this star fast, but there is no need to do this. You, you have, the idea is you want to pop your healing touch just before the laser comes back. Uh, that way, as soon as you finish your star, you hold down on the nunchuck and start lasering Cardia. Uh, it takes some getting used to on the timing, but do this star nice and slow so that you guarantee that you get a perfect star. You don't want a messy star here and Cardia messing up its its cycle. You absolutely need a buffered star here. Draw this nice and slow. If you fail, 
the laser will come back, you would not damage Cardia in time, and it'll start attacking. And the thing is, if it's attacking with uh, tumors, it gets iframes for the entire attack duration. So I'm, I'm gonna try to illustrate this here, but I, I think there isn't enough time. So uh, after healing touch is active, just keep lasering. Runs out, just keep your cursor on it and keep holding A to laser as soon as it comes back. So sometimes before you deal the third point of damage, it'll begin an attack, depending on how the cycle turned out for you. If this attack is a bunch of lacerations, just let it do its thing, keep damaging it. It can still be damaged. But if it's the tumors, it's a game over, because when it's spawning tumors, it gets iframes for the entire attack duration. So this is why it's very important that you buffer this star. Because if you take too long to draw this star, the laser comes back, Cardia is getting closer and closer to its attack pattern, and there is a, a small chance that it, it, it usually starts attacking with lacerations and then goes to tumors. But there is a small chance that it will go the other way around, go to tumors first and then to um, lacerations. If it goes to tumors first, your run will die because you cannot laser him while he's spawning tumors. Make sure you draw this star nice, slow and precise. Don't worry about speed. You have your entire laser cooldown to draw this, which is a holy five seconds. Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you got, you got like four seconds. And then just keep keep your laser on it until it dies. It's as simple as that. It'll go berserk. If your healing touch runs out as it's circling, just like like let's say that it. The laser died here, right? So, um, let's say that my healing touch ran out now, and it's going to like finish the circle and move to the center. Uh, make sure that you aim at the center. Like, if it's still going the loop, you can try to hit him, but you'll most likely miss. As soon as it goes to the center, aim for the center and just hope that you can deal enough damage before the ripples reach the tumors. If you do it right, it won't even get to finish the the ring before exploding. And that's new blood. <laughs> Imagine getting four bandage misses, dude. Four. Let's watch that again. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. Also remember that in the epilogue, it starts with text, so hit the skip button. Don't mash A. Mash A on the title card. And that's time on skip fade. So there you go. If you have any questions, hit me up on Discord. Always happy to answer questions.